to first talk about the application and then I will talk about how do we get our result. At the end, I will talk about how to use our result to minimize the module function. Uh, another thing is our title is called Faster Cutting Pin Method and here the cutting pin method is not the usual cutting pin method to solve integer programming. I'm saying a type of algorithm used to solve polynomial time problem. Uh, people in in certain area of optimization will call this localization method instead of cutting pin method. So so I will first talk about the application. So the motivation for this project is pretty simple. Recently, Margie Sigfor and I realized how to solve maximum flow problem faster. And the way we solve it is we realize maximum flow problem is a linear programming. And we get a general faster algorithm for linear programming. And this is just the corollary. And we asked myself, how can we solve a larger class of problems such that we get more application? Because some problem cannot formulate as a linear program efficiently. So it turns out there is two problem, which is even more general than linear program. Uh, many combinatorial optimization problem in P can be reduced to either the facility problem and the intersection problem. I will divide them later, but you can see the the previous fastest running time is n to 3.38 and 4.38. And in this talk, we will improve that to n cube. And as a corollary, we get faster submodular function minimization, faster matrix intersection, and faster semi definite programming for sparse SDP. So I will first define the feasibility problem. You can think this is a class of problem ellipsoid method solved. Uh, so the problem is like this, you are given a common set k, we know it is, in a weight, it is contained in a ball with radius r, and we are given a separation oracle to access the common set. In time t, we, can, we ask the oracle at the point x, if the point is not inside the common set k, then the oracle will output the separation hyperplane, separate x and k. And for example, this point you can se separate in this way. And if the point is in K, then the oracle will output yes. And our goal is to find the point inside the common set K. Surely, we need to assume the common set is not just one point. Otherwise, it's very difficult to find it. We we'll assume it contains a ball of radius epsilon. And the, it's the previous best algorithm is the uh, ellipsoid method. Uh, turns out though the previous best is by YDA in 1989. The running time is N oracle. The cost of oracle is T and N to 3.38. 3.38 is come from 1 plus omega and the omega is the fast matrix multiplication constant. And in this talk, I will show how to do N oracle plus N cube. And because probably many of you already know what is the physical form and probably have already used this. Oh, for example, for linear program, then it's just reading the matrix one to see which constraint is violated. For most of the problem, for example, oh. What power Yeah, usually linear time, just a part of the data. Yeah. For example, say you want to solve a minimize a convex problem without any constraint, then then you can apply this film for the convex set k is the function value less than op plus epsilon, and the way you implement the separation oracle is to compute the gradient, and then turns out that is the separation oracle, and usually you have explicit formula for the gradient, and usually it's just reading the data once and then output the gradient. So usually it's linear time. Um, so if you apply the film I promised you before, then you get a film like this. You can find that x, x, x with the error is epsilon times the variation over common set B. B is the initial body which contains the op. For example, in the last film, I, I promised the common set contained in a ball with radius R, then the B is a ball with radius R. 
and you can get epsilon times the variation in time and t plus n could basically the same running time notice we did not assume anything except the function is parted in the region and it is convex. we don't assume any regularity assumption on the convex set and and the convex function the another problem we are going to solve is the intersection problem so the problem this time we have two common sets k1 and k2 and this time we have an optimization oracle instead of a separation oracle so for any given direction d the, the oracle will output you two parts x1 in k1 and x2 in k2 such that they optimize the k1 and k2 in the d direction and our goal is to find the point inside the intersection such that it optimizes the given vector C. And the previous best algorithm is reducing this problem into n physical problem. And in this, oh, and then we come up with, we didn't come up with this problem. So Matt Weiber, he, he, he is a postdoc in Princeton. And he asks us, how can you solve this problem faster? Because he has some particular problem. This problem, and we realize you can reduce this to just one physical problem. So basically, the running time is again n oracle, but this time the oracle is the optimization oracle plus n cube total work. So because this this problem is less famous, I will give more example here. So for example, you can use this to solve LP. You just write down the LP. You notice it is optimized. It is optimized a vector over intersection of two convex sets, a linear constraint plus a positive region. And both the first part, you can use linear system to solve. The second, you have explicit formula. The another example is semi-definite programming. Turns out using this theorem, you get a faster semi-definite programming solver for sparse SDP. And uh, the way to use it is again simple. You write down the poem and then realize it's intersection of two si simple poems. Notice the second poem is the eigenvalue poem. So that one is not linear time. So it really depends on the poem. Um, another example is the major intersection poem. Turns out this is the first quadratic query album for this poem and the way we realize this is matroid intersection is the intersection of matroid and matroid poem can solve by greedy method and another one is a um, mean cost submodular flow poem the previous father's query capacity is mn to the 5 and this one is n square and the way you use this is you 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 use the polyhedroid description of the uh, mean cost submodular four poem turns out is involving two poems, a module poem and and the full poem. And turns out the submodular poem is again can be solved by greedy method. So basically, those example is showing you for many combinatorial poem. If you give me a polyhedral description of the poem and then you separate it appropriately, then you get an n cube running time alpha. And in fact, if your poem is complicated enough, it's intersection of three simple poem, then you just realize it's the intersection of part times the diagonal part. So as long as your poem is, uh, can decompose into constant many complicated simple subpoms, then you can solve in n cube time. So any question about that two poem I just described? So now we go to the next part, how we solve the physical problem. So in order to answer this, we should ask ourselves, how can we solve this for the one dimension case? And probably all of you know how to solve this. Again, the problem is we have a hidden convex set. This time it's a hidden interval in the zero one interval, and we want to find the point inside it. And because we know nothing about this, we ask the oracle at the center of the zero one interval, the oracle will tell us one side of the uh, interval containing the solution. Then we recurse there, recurse there. This is exactly the by search. And clearly, this converts exponentially. And so you can think the, the physical problem is asking us how can we do by search in high dimension. And, and turns out it's easy, at least in 
free recess. So the Goomba film tells us for any convex set K, if we consider the center of gravity of the convex set K, and we consider any hyperplane passing through the CG, then you separate into two regions, and turns out each region have the volume constants more than the volume of the whole convex set. So if you re if each time you ask the oracle at the center of gravity and you restrict on the on the subdomain and then repeat, this algorithm will guarantee the volume decrease by constant factor per iteration. And because uh, the the initial volume and the the termination volume have exponential gap, so you need n iteration. And it turns out this is tight. Imagine if the oracle always tell you the larger size of the domain contains the solution, then each iteration you can only decrease the volume by one half. And here, this film gives you a way to decrease the volume by one minus one over e. So it's pretty tight. So you can think the main problem of this this uh, physical problem is to how to find a center which is easier to compute to decrease the cost per iteration. By the way, the talk is almost the same as the talk I gave in German. <laughs> yeah, so, so the, the way we solve this problem, all the previous algorithm for solving this problem follow the same framework. You start with certain feasible domain which contain the convex set K. And then each iteration, you compute the center, a certain center of the domain, maybe a center of gravity or Steiner point or whatever you want, and then the algorithm will ask ask the oracle at the po the center point, and then if the center is in K, we are done. Otherwise, the oracle will tell us ha half of the space containing the solution. So we now the feasible region is in the bool region, and we can simply string our feasible domain say omega one, and this is. Basically, all the previous album solving the physical problem follow this framework. And, and what we want to prove is we want to get a measure of the size, for example, volume or the, or the radius or whatever. We want to prove per iteration the size decreased by a constant. And in this paper, we prove something like this. We cannot prove per iteration, but we can prove on average the size decreased by a constant. Uh, so many co many we were complaining about the constant is super small, but I think this is just an indication the paper is long, and we believe the album is practical. So I already explained you can use center of gravity to solve this problem, and turns out you can find an approximate center of gravity in n to the sixth morning time. And the converging rate for the center of gravity is really good. So the main problem is how to decrease this. And the famous result, the ellipsoid method, uh, instead each iteration you maintain an ellipse and then ask the oracle at the center of ellipse. This L for measure the progress by the volume of ellipse. And each iteration, it does not get the constant converging rate. However, the cost per iteration is n squared. You can think this is the best we can hope to get. Imagine if your convex set is, is very small in a hidden n over two dimension subspace and really large other, other places. Then if you ask any oracle outside that hidden subspace, then you basically get low progress. So your album should remember a hidden n over two subspace and which take n square space. And that's why we believe n square is the best you can hope. And so there is another ellipse you can do, do is the join ellipse. So each time you remember every hyperplane you get from the, from the oracle, and then you find the maximum volume ellipse inside the, the feasible region you get, and you ask the oracle at the, at the center of join ellipse. And if you measure the progress by the volume of join ellipse, then you can prove each iteration, the volume will decrease by a constant factor. And for and turns out joint ellipse can be compared using the interior power method, which take n to 2.88. And the previous best algorithm is by Wider. So the algorithm use an center called volumetric center. I will explain in the next slides. 
But the main point here is you can think he is trying to get a center which is similar to joint lip joint center, and he can get a conversion rate which is still constant. And the benefit here is uh, the joint ellipse each step you need to recom redo the interval form method from the scratch, so you need to take square root n iteration in the interval form method. And for the volumetric center, it turns out you can maintain the previous information to update the center. And so each iteration, you only need to inverse, uh, compare one matrix inverse, we take n to 2.38. And in this talk, we will show how to improve the YD paper to n square. So any question? Yeah, so. So now I will explain how, how the volumetric cutting pin method, the YDL form work. So the L form starts with a hypercube containing a feasible region. So imagine after many iterations, the feasible region looks like this. Although it is not possible, but imagine you repeat a constraint many times on the same paces. Then you compute a volumetric center. You can think the volumetric center try to avoid every constraint a little bit. Because the constraint there repeat too many times, the constraint will, will shift away from that repeated constraint. So the main idea of the wider paper is you try to detect which constraint is unimportant or which constraint is redundant, and then you remove them. So as long as you have an important constraint, the L form will remove it, and then we compute the center, the volumetric center. After we, you remove all of them, then the center will go back to some places you think you should get. And then the alpha is similar. You ask the oracle at the center. If it is not there, then you remember the half space. And then the alpha will remember every constraint except the constraint you drop. And you can prove this center and join many good property as the joint ellipsoid center. For example, you can prove at this center there is a ellipse which give an end winding of the convex set. Um, so in some sense, you can think this L form is minimizing the joint ellipsoid L form. And, and the intuition here is like this. Why is it the so basically, the cutting pin method, one of the main property he, he is using is, at the center, you have a ellipse. And then if you enlarge the ellipse by n factor, you will contain the whole ellipse. And turns out the joint, the volumetric center have the same property. If every caution is important, I will define the importance in the next slide. So the intuition here is uh, we want to use center of gravity because because it does not depend on the description of the polytope. For example, if you repeat a constraint 10 times, it doesn't change the center of gravity. But usually, they are difficult to compare. And, and the way why they handle this issue is he used a measurement called leverage score to measure the uh, importance of a certain constraint. And he used it in two places. First, he used it to remove an important constraint. And the another place he used is turns out the, the KKT condition of the volumetric center contain the leverage score. And he, you need to use this to, to update the volumetric center. And for graph, this is usually called the uh, effective resistance. And turns out there is two known ways to compute leverage score. The first way is you can compare it by using matrix multiplication and matrix inverse. This is how I did do this. And the other way is to use dimension reduction to reduce it to solving uh, polylog many linear system. In general, solving linear system and computing matrix inverse take the same amount of time. However, for this problem, because the polytope is changing gradually, so you can think the system for each step is similar to the previous step. And there is results by me and Sigfo so how to solve a sequence of linear system in n square time. And, and so if you use this, then each iteration take n square time. And then because there is only n iteration, so you should believe you can get n cube running time. However, there is many trouble for using the approximate leverage score. 
For example, say we get an approximation W, which is a constant approximation. Then the volume, and if you use this approximation to compute volumetric center, then you will get the center look like this. You can think the leverage, the leverage score the, is is indicating the importance of the constraint, and then the volumetric center is trying to use this importance to calculate the center. For example, this constraint become half le less important, then the constraint will shift here slightly, and because each dimension is kind of independent for this example, so it, it will get a center look like this, and this is really bad. Imagine the oracle tell you this hyperplane. Then we know this is a, this is a high dimension hypercube. Most of the volume is inside there, so you didn't get any progress. Uh, you get exponential small progress, and this is bad. And so our intuition is okay. Doing approximation is bad, but maybe consistently doing a bad approximation is a good thing. So the reason is here. Imagine it is easier to think about the center of gravity L form. Imagine instead of computing the center of gravity, you compute a center of gravity according to some distribution, say according to some log concave distribution, and say that distribution is shift towards some direction. And each iteration you compute the CG according to that distribution. And turns out you can prove it will converge in exactly the same conversion rate. Uh, so basically, as long as your center don't jump around, then maybe the oracle can tell you one bad direction one time, but for the next iteration, the oracle cannot check you. So turns out if you go over the wider algorithm, turns out he lead uh, approximation like this. First, the approximation lead to be multiplicative. Second, you want the estimation to jump around. Oh, by the way, you can prove in the YDL from the true leverage score don't jump around, so this is possible. And it turns out you only need the approximation don't jump around. And the other thing is, he want the L form is unbiased. If the last iteration you get the exact estimate, then you want the next iteration is also exact in expectation. And it turns out this can be done. So you can think our album is try to do a management of the approximation. We, we we store the previous estimation. We use the dimension reduction to to estimate the difference of leverage score instead of the average score itself. The reason of this is because uh, the leverage score itself, you can think it has large L2 lom. The L2 lom is like uh, proportion to the dimension D. And turns out you can, because the leverage score difference is more in L2 long, if you use dimension reduction to estimate this, the approximation also have a small error in L2 long. So it satisfies this condition. Also, JL always satisfies the, the co correlates in expectation. And because we're doing update per each step, after many enough steps, you will validate this condition with some co Probability. So at that time, we will up only recompute that coordinate, and turns out that it's easier than computing all coordinate together. So, so by doing all of this, you can think we reduce the problem of estimating leverage score to a sequence of linear system AI, x equals to bi, with the problem as AI is similar to each one is similar. And then we can use the fast L form for solving sequence of linear system. And you can think this L form is trying to reduce the problem to solving a smaller linear system. The way you think about this is imagine you want to solve a linear system for the first step. And say for the first step, you can compute the true matrix inverse. It only takes n to omega time. But because we only do it for the first iteration, we can amortize the cost. Say for the next iteration, if the matrix is only update for a rank one matrix, then you can use explicit formula to update the matrix inverse. And turns out there is many tricks you can do to make sure you can do this even the the matrix is changed by a high rank matrix. As long as the rank is not too much, then you can reduce solving a bunch of linear system to to a small linear system. Then you can use fast matrix multiplication there. 
And it turns out we need to assume the omega is less than 1 plus square root 2, which is correct nowadays. Yeah, so this is the album. So you can think our album is trying to build a data structure for consistent estimation of left face score. So, so although the album is a little bit messy, the geometric interpretation is very key. We are simulating the YDA paper, YDA is simulating the joint ellipse paper. So you can think our album, each iteration you compare a approximate joint ellipse, you ask the oracle there, it gives you a hyperplane, then you get it down the feasible region, you find the joint, approximate joint ellipse again, and then again and again. Uh, the funny thing here is this album look almost the same as the previous father's album for linear program by me and Sigford. So the album is like this. Uh, for the linear program, you, have, have, you want to minimize the cost, so you have a cost constraint. So the album gradually move the cost constraint, you want to decrease the cost. And then the album just trying to maintain an approximate joint ellipsoid per it iteration. And you prove you only need to take square root d many iteration for linear programming. Yeah, so basically it's same, except the way we get the separation is not from the cost constraint but from the oracle. So, yeah, so this this finished the description for the physical problem, L form, any problem? Question? Yeah, so now. If you don't understand what I have been saying, now you can forget about this. Now we come to the intersection problem. It is a reduction, so you don't need to know the previous error form at all. So in case you forget about the intersection problem, we want to minimize a function like this. We want to minimize a linear function over intersection. We are given an oracle to optimize over each convex set in time t. And the previous fastest running time is like this. Uh, and it is very important because this gives the first polynomial time album for many combinatorial problems. Um, the previous approach for solving this problem is using the equivalence between separation and the optimization. And in this, in, in this talk, I give another way to solve this, which is, I think, much easier. So our weight is here, you notice our problem is the constraint is x in inside intersection. So you just you can just get another variable y. You restrict x in, in k1, y in k2. Also in the objective function you want to make sure x is close to y, so you put a quadratic term there. Also, yeah, it's always good to make the problem. this is maximization problem, you want to make the problem strongly concave. So we put an extra term there to make the problem strongly concave. And then our trick is here. You notice x squared is, this is just the Lagrangian deal of the x squared, which is again x squared. So x squared can represent by minimizing a linear term plus beta squared. So if you use this formula inside this formula, then you can Lagrangian deal all the quadratic term. Then you notice here, you will get a bunch of theta 1 square, theta 2 square, theta 3 square. And the key check here is just a mean mass relation. You can swap the mean mass because this is conca convex concave form. And you notice when you, sw when you swap that, uh, then you are trying to, yeah, this one is already swapped. Notice we want the, the variable is now theta 1, 2, 3. And the problem is, the, pro, the function we are trying to minimize is the whole time. And notice the, the, you can try to compute the gradient of this function. Turns out the gradient is just x, involving x and y and some formula of theta. So if you give me an optimization oracle, I can compute the gradient of the whole function very efficiently and and so by using our cutting plane method you can solve this main mass problem in n cube time however we only get theta 1 2 3 the variable then how can we get better x and y and turns out you can compute the, you can check the automatic condition theta 1 is equals to x minus y theta 2 is x and theta 3 is y so you basically just rip off the 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 primal solution from the deal theta variables. Sorry, I understand. So what's the reduction? So where does theta one theta two fit? 
so so you the data is come from you dualize the quadratic function you notice x squared is minimized of this okay and then you respect every quadratic function by this formula uh, so you get three variables theta 1 and 2 and 3 yeah and then you just realize this one we can compute the gradient using the optimization oracle so this is a fun you forget about that this is a function of theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 and you want to compute the gradient of this function and and turns out it is a general theorem if if maybe I is easy to write here say say your problem is like this some convex set uh, say your the first thing is look like of this form turns out the gradient of f is just equal to x because yeah you can see if you don't have this term then surely the gradient is x and turns out even with this term it's also x it's just some direct calculation Bas okay uh, first of all you can notice x is always a subgradient because this is maximization and turns out oh, I should say x star turns out the, the optimal solution is is the subgradient okay, an optimal. yeah yeah so we can find the gradient of this term explicitly using the optimization oracle. But optimization were just k1 or would be Yeah, but they are separate for separate calls because because of k1. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so we almost did nothing here. <laughs> but it is a reduction. Any question about this reduction? The first, you mean this time? No, the first problem. Which? Why is the mass equal? Mass equal. Wait, which term? Oh, this one? OK, because imagine if you pick lambda is infinity, then you basically enforce x equals to y. Then, you, then this constraint is the same as that constraint. And if lambda is infinity, then 1 over infinity is 0. So that term disappears also. And you can prove if lambda is some polynomial on nm over epsilon, then the ly is small enough to recover the solution. Yeah, or, or basically, the only way to think about this reduction is we generally believe if we have a primal deal problem, if we can solve the primal, then we can get the deal. And for the, and we know separation and optimization is kind of primal deal. And then we just write down the formal relation here. So this may be completely idiotic, but there's another, there's another kind of game that's sometimes played in solving combinatorial problems using this called dividing the curve. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Yeah. Into the intersection. I mean, it just seems like it, it smells a little bit like it might explain something there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how to use those in in the combinator. I mean, I don't know. Uh, the combinator divide and conquer is usually constructing an L from smell like this, but. I think that usually when you use numerical method to solve combinatorial problem, then those tricks will just reduce to writing a formula instead of developing an error form. Um, yeah, I don't know if there is formula relation between them. Yeah, so the last part is the module minimization. <coughs> so just to recall what is a module function, so we have a we have a function which defines on subset of the u universe u, 
and uh, we call such function is a module if f s plus f t is greater than f s union t plus f intersection t. The easy way to think about this is diminishing with marginal return. So we say you have a set x and larger set y. And this condition is saying if you put a element into the set x, then the function value increase is larger than you put it into the larger set. And this problem is very important. You can think this can include many fundamental problems in combinatorial optimization. You can think this is a discrete analog of the co convexity. Also, it includes the mi minimum ST card. And recently, there is many machine learning applications. Yeah. And in this talk, I will use the notation. I assume the function f is integer from 0 to m. I assume we can evaluate the function in time EO. And we assume the empty set is 0. And our goal is to get a fast L from. Remember, there's two terms. We want to minimize the number of time we call the Oracle. And we want to minimize the overhead. And there is three regime of this problem. We, we call L from is strongly polynomial if it does not depend on M. If we call it weakly polynomial if it depends on poly law of M. And we call it pseudo polynomial if it depends poly M. And, and there is many. You are, you are minimizing the function? Okay. Yeah, minimize. We minimize. But why, why is the empty set minimized? Uh, oh, yeah, why? Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. My, uh, probably this is uh, the, 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 the whole set. The universe is, is zero. Yeah, so, yeah, there is many results. That previously, the best weekly polynomial time is by Iwata. The only time is n to the fourth. And the best, best Johnny polynomial is by only n to the five. And in this talk, I give n to the n square oracle call for weekly polynomial and n cube for Johnny polynomial. And in the rest of the talk, we will have free research. The first is the weekly polynomial time alpha. The second research is we show how to get the n cube oracle call, but in this result we don't care about the overhead. We will get, give an exponential time alpha to do this. This is just an effort that you can do this. And then at the end we will give an alpha with polynomial time running time with n cube oracle. And the funny thing is, for the first two parts, we basically use, we almost use low structure about the submodule function. We only use one fact. You can extend the submodule function into the hypercube. You can do the robust extension such, and you notice the extension, the, the subgradient of the extension can be computed in an oracle call. And the other fact we're using is the minimizer is at the vertex. So remember from earlier, we have this theorem to minimize the convex function. Uh, the, the statement changed a little bit. We assume the function f is only defined inside the hypercube. Uh, we guarantee in n, or, in n oracle call plus n cube time, we can find a solution with epsilon times the variation. So basically, we just directly use this theorem. And to use this theorem, we need to extend the definition of the submodule function from, from subset to real number. And it turns out this is called the Lavoisier extension. Uh, we call that function f hat. And the definition is very simple. Given a vector x, you can say pick a threshold t. And then you consider all the coordinates about the threshold. You compute the function value there. And then you take the expectation over the threshold t. Then this is the outcome is the extension we are getting. And you can prove this is indeed the extension. That means for any subset S, you consider the integrated vector of that subset, and the Fs is equal to F hat of the integrated vector. And the only way to divide the, the Lovas extension is by this way, without loss of generality, you can sort the vector from largest to smallest. And turns out the 
the extension thing is given by this explicit formula. The way to notice here is notice this is linear to x. So you can think the west extension is a piece piecewise linear extension of the function value from the from the vertex of hypercube to, to the interior. And the import the main property we are using for this toy is this this extension is a convex extension and the subgrading is easy to compute by some explicit formula and you can compute it by computing the function value in n different set and the way to notice here is because remember the function is piecewise linear so the subgrading is just the, the linear pieces so basically it's the same formula so 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 in the results one and two, we only use this this fetch to to minimize the module function. So I already explained the Lovac extension, and using this with the convex minimization theorem, the the only thing we need to pick is what is the epsilon we should pick, because we assume the function is bounded in in zero to m, so the variation is more than m. So you just need to pick epsilon equals to 1 over 2m, then you get a pawn with error less than half. Then there is a rounding procedure by, by picking the best threshold. You can, you can round the solution to the integer pawn. And then basically, this will give the results there. This is the weekly polynomial time album. We almost didn't use anything about the module. Uh, Turns out the second result also didn't use anything. Uh, let's try to understand why you need to depend on m for for the previous error form. Imagine your submodular function is look like this. Uh, say you have a point really close to zero. This is not integer, but anyway. Uh, after many iterations of our cutting pin method, basically you will find the feasible region is inside a very thin strip. And the main problem you are getting is, for each iteration, you are just decreasing the width a little bit, and you almost get low information until you you pay a lot m better. And and turns out this is not the end of the game. The main thing we realize is this this region after n or n step has volume less than n to minus n, which is exponentially small. And our observation is very, very simple. We realize the volume of a sympath is greater than 1 over n to factorial. So if your, con if your feasible region has volume less than n to mass n, then it does not contain a sympath. That means all the, all the integer points inside the feasible region must lie inside the same hyperplane. So the, we basically do an algorithm like this. You want n or n iteration. Then we know there is only one hyperplane containing all the integer solution. You find the hyperplane, and then you recurse on that hyperplane. Because there is only n variables, so you need n phase to solve this problem. And uh, this is why it takes n cube log n oracle call. Uh, by the way, so so the n factor, the you have n phases. For each phase, you lead to one n iteration. For each iteration, you need to compute the subgradient, which involve computing n evaluation. So it's n cube. And so this is uh, exponential time to getting the uh, oracle complexity. And uh, now I will explain how to get the complexity done. So. So the main problem for directly using this algorithm is that uh, finding such hyperplane is, at least I don't know how to do, maybe it's easy. Uh, so our idea is, because our function is a module, so those hyperplane is not a random hyperplane, we can use some structure about the module to, to only focus on some subset of hyperplane which we care. So the subset we are using is very simple. So in the algorithm, we will maintain a directed graph. We put an edge from vertex from variable i to variable j. If we know i is in the minimizer, implied j is in the minimizer. 
uh, under this constraint, it is still easy to minimize. It's easy to minimize the lowest extension under this constraint. You can just enforce x i less than x j in the optimization of uh, picture. And our main problem is how can we find those edge? If we find all, if we get the n square edge, then we are done already. So, so it turns out there is two way to get those edge. The first way is imagine if your hyperplane is very aligned to SS, then that means it is telling you a certain coordinate is in the minimizer or certain coordinate is not in the minimizer. And it turns out in uh, mathematically, it turns out if there is a certain coordinate inside the convex combination of the subgrading is very, very large or very, very small, then we know certain element is in the minimizer a lot. And this is one type of progress. The another type of progress, we need a, another notation we call Rp is P union, the descendant of P. The descendant is according to the directed graph we have. And so what we realize is if FRP mass FRP mass P is very large, then we know there is an edge from P to Q. And also, we can find such edge very easily. So those techniques is already used for the previous algorithm for, for strongly polynomial time algorithm for some module minimization. Uh, the interesting here is like this. Imagine if P is the minimizer, because of the definition here, Rp is also in the minimizer. But we already promised you Rp is much larger than Rp minus P, which does not make sense because we want to minimize the function. And the only way this can happen is because there is another variable which make this happen. And that, that is the edge P to Q. And and because uh, some module function is kind of symmetric, if fx is some module, you can take the complement of every set. This is still some module. So every condition we have have a symmetry tree version. Two version is the same. Uh, so basically, you can what we prove is after you run n or n iteration of the cutting brain method, you can make sure you have a very thin convex set. Then because the conversation is really thin, we can prove either we find a coordinate which is a lot in the minimizer, or we find an edge. And because there is at most n square edge, so this helps from take n to the fourth oracle. So, so, the, so the next step we improve this is we realize uh, the bottom there is finding edge, finding coordinate is always good. For finding edge, we realize this condition does not really depend on the convex set we are getting. It does not depend on the subgradient we are getting during the alpha. So even before we run the cutting brain method, we know which, which uh, variable have higher chance to get an edge. So our idea is focus on the variable P such that this is large or this is negative, and we ignore all the variables, and we run the cutting point method only on the subset of coordinate. And because the cutting point method, the running time depends on the number of variables, so if there is only k coordinate, this is large, then this L form will, the cutting point method will converge in k log n iteration. And after the k log n iteration, because everything is large here, you will find it at the same time. So for every k, k log n iteration of cutting point method, you are going to get k coordinate. And so in amortized, you can find one coordinate per, per one iteration of cutting point method. And so this gives the n cube running time. Any question? We restrict on the graph. We have the yeah, this is not a hyper. It is so the idea from this is going to a hyper plane is still used here, or 
No, no, no. The we respect the hyper well, hyper ping by this kind of function. This is the ring family. Oh, oh, here. Uh, the dimension cut is only coordinate dimension cut. Yeah, so you can just restrict. Yeah, that is easier to do it. Yeah, so here. Yeah, so I conclude my talk with this, this two myth. So there is two myth in uh, in TCS. They people usually think the L form for the physicality problem and intersection problem is not competitive at all. And also they usually think ellipsoid method or is very like cutting pin method usually doesn't work. And in this talk we show this can be done in n local corpus n cube that is basically tight. And this is the fastest album for the many computational problem. And for the practical case in the last talk I gave in in last Friday in Princeton, I show a certain variant of ellipsoid method which is really good in practice for a problem which is far from a quadratic function, basically it is much better than exact gradient descent and cross elliptic method. So basically that two myth is just myth. And yeah, so I have a bunch of open poem here. So the first open poem is for general commerce optimization, we believe the n cube time is tight because they are general linear system. You really need to remember those linear system and you really need to solve those linear system. But for some module, we believe it may not be true, maybe you can do better. So the first open poem is can you decrease the overhead using the module structure? The another uh, open problem is can you prove the lower bound n square on cool core is the lower bound? Imagine you want to find the mean SD cut uh, because the graph have n square edge. So you could imagine you need n square number to find the mean SD cut. Uh, but we don't know how to prove this is a lower bound. So this is an open problem. The best lower bound is still omega n. So also the next problem is for the shorter polynomial, the log square n is not really lateral, it should be log n. Uh, so I think this is more interesting. Can you not using some more smaller some module structure to get us the shorter polynomial time L form? Uh, remember we already proved in terms of Oracle, yes, but if we want to get the polynomial time running time, then we don't know yet. So, so I am trying to. So for general convex optimization, I am already have some experiment. It seems it work, but for the module, I haven't done the experimentation yet. So if you have any bad case, please tell me. I will try it. So the and open problem you notice here. So, so for the symmetric module problem. The current fastest weekly polynomial time algorithm is slower than the long symmetric version, which is funny because previously people usually believe the symmetric version is easier, but we don't know it now. And the other problem is we get a faster weekly and faster journey, can you get a faster to the polynomial? And uh, we asked this question last month in Germany, and this problem I heard a myth is already solved, but I am, yeah. So now we go to the open problem about cutting pin method. The first problem is can you prove n cube is the lower bound for the extra work? Because we already know n oracle is the lower bound. Uh, the other problem is our album use the fact omega is less than one plus square root two. I don't really like that. If we can improve this to two point seven something then we have an efficient alpha but currently this one is a little bit theoretic so the last problem is we know for linear program we can solve in square n iteration and for physical problem we need n iteration and the problem is what kind of additional information we need to get for example if the oracle tell you the best separation of hyperplane then can you beat the n over bar yeah, so today is uh, the last general poem. So, the, so in the last talk I gave you in Princeton last Friday, 
I saw there is some relation between first order method, that means like gradient descent, actually gradient descent, so classic descent, a bunch of error form. The first order method, they are in fact quite similar to cutting pain method. You can get that error form look in both ways. And in this talk, I give a faster cutting pain method, which look almost the same as the interior form method. Also, there is many relation between first order method and the interior form method. For example, in bandit palm, people usually do mixture of two, two to, to get the fastest error form. And the general form problem is, can you get one error form and join all the property? Thank you.